Hello, I'm Kyle Bradshaw, and welcome to the Turn Signal Department here at Chaparral Motorsports. Today we're gonna to discuss Turn Signal 101. Now today we're gonna to be focusing on the basics of turn signals, not really any specific brand. So please take a look at our other videos where we take each of these specific brands and kind of show you the rundown of how they work. Now before we get too deep, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified of upcoming videos that we have to release. Now when looking at replacement turn signals, there's lots of different avenues you can take. You can do a direct OEM replacement that's basically gonna have a plug and play pigtail to your factory wiring harness. Or you can do an upgrade, and that's what most people do. So typically our bikes come with a relatively large turn signal housing and a big rubber stock that sticks off of the motorcycle. When upgrading to an aftermarket turn signal, it's a great way to go a little bit stealthier, if you will. This here is a short stub with a rubber mount as well, but it gives you that carbon fiber look. It still has an incandescent bulb and is gonna function like stock. Turn signals do get broken, and when it's time to replace them, you've got lots of different options. Take a look at this wall of turn signals that we have here at Chaparral Motorsports. As you can see, the options are nearly endless. But which route do you wanna go? Do you wanna go with an OEM style replacement? How about a short stock carbon fiber? Or do you ride a cruiser and you want a good chrome look? Or do you want to upgrade to LEDs? There's lots of different ways to go and we're here to show you how simple that process can be. Now one thing to think about when doing your upgrade is are you gonna go incandescent or are you gonna go LED? If you're going incandescent, it's basically a plug and play situation. No need to add load equalizers, resistors, or anything of that nature. If you do decide to go LED, you're gonna to have to put a load equalizer or a resistor in line in order to tell the bike that the vehicle is drawing more power than an LED light typically draws. Adding the load equalizer is gonna eliminate that flash fast that you see on some motorcycles that have LED lights that haven't done that part of the conversion. So when it comes to electronics, most people are scared to death, but turn signals, they're really pretty easy. So let's dig in and take a look at the two most popular setups, the two wire, and the three-wire setup. All of the two-wire setups are gonna be non-functional while you're running down the road. And then when you flip that turn signal on, they're gonna go ahead and flash. Now, when it comes to the three-wire setup, you're gonna have a running wire, a turn wire, and your ground wire. Now, to simplify things even more, I'm gonna show you a picture of what wiring looks like and how simple it can be to get the wiring correct on your specific application. So this diagram here shows you really quite simply the two wire and three wire setup. You're gonna have a ground on both of them and then you're gonna have a power wire. For the signal that's just a signal and not a running light, that power wire is gonna be the single other wire that's in that setup. When it comes to the three wire setup, you're gonna have a ground wire, a running light wire, which is gonna be the less intense of the two brightnesses and the turn signal wire. So the running wire is gonna be hot all the time. That's gonna to go to a switch source that's gonna always be on when the key is on in the motorcycle. And then the turn signal wire is gonna flash bright. So the filament intensity is gonna increase when that wire is activated. And there you have it, turn signal 101. Now this is the very, very simplest of the basic explanation that we can give you on turn signals. Are you gonna go incandescent or are you gonna go LED? Are you gonna have a two wire or a three wire setup? Those are gonna be the things you wanna take a look at of your stock or OEM unit before you choose which turn signals you want to install on your motorcycle. I'm Kyle Brad from Chaparral Motorsports. If you have any questions about turn signals, come visit us at our 160,000 square foot retail showroom, which I'm standing in right now, or give us a call to the 800 number or leave me a comment below. If you found this video at all entertaining or you learned something, please give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more like this in your email inbox, please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'm Kyle, take care and ride safe.